This is the third video in the Tracy series. Um, these videos were recorded uh, about a week and a half ago. And because of the nature of them, I'm finding I'm having to edit them. So this video that you're watching here can actually stand uh, alone as a standalone video, but I'm including it as part of the Tracy series because it is the same computer. But this video is just gonna be about cleaning the computer, cl clean, physical cleaning of the interior of the computer. So if you're watching the Tracy series of videos just because you're interested in trying to fix what I'm trying to do to fix the operating system, then you could skip this one if you don't care about how I go about cleaning the inside of computers. For the rest of you that are interested in this, some of you may have come to this video not even knowing that this is part of a series of videos. And there will be an end card at the end of this video, probably the bottom right corner, that will take you to the whole series of videos on this computer. But uh, so you're about to join that video in progress. I'll see you later. Now I noticed when I was taking the VGA off is that this nut here was spinning. Uh, not tight. So I got My various drivers here because I want to tighten that up. Whoops, that's not it. That one's too big. Because <clears throat> that will eventually become a problem where I disconnect the VGA cable and then the nut, the nut shaft bolt, whatever, stays connected to the VGA cable. And that's a nuisance. So this case has a screw, a thumb screw right here. It's got one of these eye holes here that you could put a padlock through to prevent somebody from taking the case cover off. I think if a person gets into your office and, or your home can take the case cover off and they can take your hard drive out, go attach it to another computer, and they can access the files on your hard drive even if they don't know your login password. Uh, for most computers, that login password is not required to access the files on the computer, that, the files that are on the hard drive. All you have to do is connect that hard drive to another computer, similar to the way that I'm going to connect these hard drives. Now, different cases come apart differently. The side that comes off is pretty much always the opposite side of the motherboard. You can tell where the motherboard is because that's where the connectors are. So the cover on the other side is what's going to come off. Now some computer cases have a panel up here or a panel in front you have to take off first. Sometimes the screws could be on the top or on the front. But the factory manufactured major name computers, pretty common that there's some form of screws on the back. So because we have this uh, lock eye, eye bolt here, we know that means that this panel is going to have to slide off this direction. <clears throat> the way I typically do is facing this way, got get some pressure down on my the uh, palms of my hand and push backwards. And then once it gets past that mark there, it should come up like this. Now I did take this cover off yesterday and it was far more difficult. It was far more difficult than it was this time. It was very hard to get it past this point here. I kind of had to pry it past. And it could be useful to look at the connections to understand how the case cover fastens to the case. There's these slots all along here, and there's these uh, bent out pieces of metal. That's a technical term. <laughs> uh, this guy right here, that's nothing to do with getting the cover off that has to do with getting the expansion port covers off so that gets that off and then let's see what i can do for showing you around inside the computer a bit light. 
Let me wind up using that light. Let's switch to this camera and see what we can get. <clears throat> Turn that down. So here's what it looks like inside, and I can tell by uh, looking at my streaming computer, you can see that there's a lot of dust here. There's not, I don't see any dust bunnies around there, so it's not nearly as bad as I've seen on some computers. And the cooling fins for the CPU are right here. I don't see a lot of dust there. Let's see if I can get you a better view of that. They look pretty clean. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and take this case outside and blow it out. So I'm going to be splicing some videos together. This is the, the end of this little segment. We're going to, I'm going to take the case outside and show you one method that I can use to, to blow it out. Side, there's one more piece here. As I turn the camera around that way, there's a big bus, dust bunny. And a little bit more over that way. You could use a vacuum cleaner to pull out dust bunnies like that. And if you are unable to take a computer outside, you could um, <clears throat> Use a compressed air can, but you gotta be, that really gets messy indoors. Uh, blows dust all over the place and <clears throat> people breathe the air, so it's always much easier, more convenient if you can take it outside. So here we go, turn the, stop the recording again. So I've got this all set up on my front porch, so let's go outside and check that out and press record. And, and here we go, out to the front porch. And let's turn. Can I turn the camera around? Oh, I gotta stop that video. To turn the camera around. I'm gonna get my sandals on. And then my weapons of choice: a vacuum cleaner, where I'll attach the hose to the exhaust port, or an electric leaf blower. But this time, because just because I've never used it before, I'm gonna use the hair dryer. So here I'm set up outside. Here's the computer. And I'm going to give you a vantage point right here. I think that's going to work right there. So this air dryer has a high and a low and a cool button. So I'm going to set it on high and hold the cool button. This will be even better.
that's pretty good. Really pretty decent. Not perfect. Wouldn't pass as a refurbished computer in any way. I think I already got the front of it cleaned out pretty good. I didn't actually show that to you before. But let's take a look at what the vacuum cleaner will do. That definitely got some more out of there. I saw some more dust flying out. Now let's try the leaf blower. Now this guy is pretty dusty. I didn't blow that off the inside of that since I removed it. So that obviously left a layer of dust that's a little bit moist and there's no blower that's going to get that off. I'm going to see if I got compressed can, a can of compressed air, see what that'll do. So no, I don't have compressed air, I must have used my last can. So I don't think that would have done much good on this anyway, so these flat surfaces just take a cloth and wipe them. This is a microfiber cloth, and it even feels kind of 
oily. It does not feel like just dust. Simple dry dust should blow off. But this area in the computer is more likely to uh, be exposed to some moisture in the dust. And it's not really necessary to clean that off. It's just kind of nice. Okay, so that's it for out here. I'll see you back inside. So that was, that was so nice outside. When I came back inside, it just felt kind of warm to me. So I've got the window open now. I, I can't open the blinds all the way because it lets in too much light. But I've got the windows open, and so you're going to hear some uh, birds chirping and, and cars going by and stuff like that. It's a little bit different auditory experience than in other videos. So here's the way that... Um, CPU fan shroud turned out. Let's see. Yeah, so just after wiping it, it, it's in pretty good shape. Now, I didn't show you that I was going to remove that CPU fan shroud. I just did it outside. And so the place that that goes is, is down here between the CPU fan and the heat sink. So this fan, by looking at the blades, you can tell that it's sucking air in from the, from the outside, from the front of the computer, and the air goes through this direction, and it goes through the CPU heat sink, which is kind of like a radiator, like a radiator in a car, where the air goes through it. And then this fan on the back side, exhaust air out this direction and we can tell that by the direction of the blades where's a good shot okay there there you can see this this fan right here you can't see the blades close enough so I'll see if I can show you that and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to describe this well enough this way but let's try so if you can imagine the blades on a on an airplane propeller the way they kind of curve, you can distinguish that way, which way the, the air is coming in. Because the air comes in over blades, the blades that have kind of a, a cupping motion, kind of a kind of a curled or bent cupping motion. So the lead edge of the blade turns in a way so that it's it's cupping the air. And that's that's the way I can tell easily which way a blade turns for a fan. So then on the power supply, there's also a fan here and it's exhausting air out this direction. So it sucks air from the inside of the computer and exhausts it out the back. So the airflow in this computer is that it comes in from the front of the computer through the the fan shroud and then through the heat sink for the CPU because the CPU is where most of the heat is generated and it goes out through this fan and it gets diverted this way through this fan so the air is essentially circulated over the entire motherboard and then the other thing I want to show is about this heat sink it they commonly function like a radiator in a car and we want to know that they are clean and clear so we can see through those those blades and that's where they get really dusty there there's the best view I've given you yet you can actually see between those blades and those get really clogged up with dust and that moist dust that I showed you on the on the fan shroud is coming from the outside right into this heat sink so it's easy for the dust in there to be really kind of difficult sometimes to get off and that's when the a can of compressed air is really effective through here when a, a blow dryer or vacuum or leaf blower might not be because of the little straw that a can of compressed air has is much better I guess that camera was really wonky, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's move along here. Well, you know what? I need to put that fan shroud back in. I wonder how well I can show that. 
So this fan shroud has clips that I think you might have seen me pressing on to try to get this off. So I press on the bottom side of the clip in order to get the top of it to release. There's a decent view. Yeah. So I press here and this top part comes up to release its uh, grip. And it the grips go towards the fan. So just reverse that to put it on. So I've never seen or worked with that particular shroud before. The way these cases come apart, the way they're structured inside, the, the fan shroud, the, where the fans are positioned, a lot of variety from one computer to another. It, uh, it's not very scary. It, it, what, what can go wrong? Well, as you're messing with it, you could pull a wire loose somewhere. Or the other possibility is that the, the pins and the connectors that are in here sometimes have a film. Well, I'm going to describe it this way. Have a film of corrosion on them to where what happens is when you go plug the computer back in, something's wrong. It won't turn on or, or whatever. And you look at all the connectors. They all seem okay. You kind of push on all the connectors and they seem seated okay. But really the thing to do is disconnect them and reconnect them. So when I run into that problem, I'll just disconnect every wire that I can disconnect and plug it back in. And just the friction of taking that off and putting it on again will scrape through that corrosion. Now, that explanation is my deduction. It's not my scientific knowledge. So take that for what it's worth. But it has worked for me many, many times where I just unplug a connection, put it back in, and then it works. So my explanation for that is that a film of corrosion on the electrical components Take them off, put them back on. That's enough to scrape through that corrosion and reestablish the connection. Now, I also have, though, what I'll, what I'll do sometimes for that is while I have them disconnected, I'll use this WD-40 electrical contact cleaner. And just, you know, that's what it says it does, so maybe that's better. So the computer's clean now, very substantially clean. I was thinking after I completed this that I didn't put a whole lot of effort into trying to uh, blow underneath the motherboard. So possible there's still some dust bunnies in there, but you know what, that doesn't really that's not that important. I do not always clean computers out when they come into my lab. If I see that they're really bad, and I've seen some really bad ones, then, I, then I'll clean it out even if it's not needed for the service that's, that's involved. But the level of dust, dust bunnies and dust this computer had, not a big deal. The, the CPU um, heat sink was not clogged, not at all. It was, it was very clear to the eye, but having blown through it, I suspect it's better now than it was. Okay, so next is the SSD drives. In the next video in the Tracy series is going to be installing SSD drives and doing backup and restore operations on this computer to continue the efforts of trying to resolve the problem that it has. Um, so that ends this video. If you would like to request a free support session with me, I've got to hit the right button there. <laughs> my, the whole foundation of my channel is intended to be doing live streaming on YouTube with uh, helping people through Zoom, through connecting remotely to their computers to help them with whatever issues or requests they have about their computers. And I'm doing some of these fill-in videos because not enough people are asking for assistance these days. I thought that when I offered my services for free that I, I would be overwhelmed with work not happening. 
So if there's anything I can help you with, please send me an email, dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Tell me what you'd like to have help with. You don't have to go into a lot of detail and we'll put it together. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Catch you later. Goodbye.